All right, boys, let's finish what we started yesterday. Quick little recap. Yesterday, we got the ring end gap set. The piston to wall clearance is checked. The rod bearing clearance is checked. Last thing to do is to check the main bearing clearances. Now, I usually use plastic gauge. I've always used plastic gauge in the past. I figured since I'm building high horsepower motors now, it's only right to step up to high quality measuring devices. So I got some telescope. What is this called again? I don't know. I'd have to ask my dad. I am not a machinist like him. So I stole a bunch of measuring tools from my dad. <laughs> Just go watch yesterday's video if you want to know like how I learned how to use all these tools. But today, let's check the main bearing clearances. Now, if all that checks out, we should be able to get the full short block assembled. All right, so according to my calculations, the block fully torqued down with the bearings comes out to 2.0485, and then the crank on this drone right here, journal five is 2.0467. So that comes out to 0 0.0018, which is 1.8 thousandths of an inch, which is exactly, honestly, exactly what I'm going for. Maybe 0 0.019 would be a tiny bit better, but a 10th of a thousandth of an inch, I think we're okay. So I'm gonna go ahead. That was journal number five. I'm gonna go ahead and bust out the other four. And if we're all around 0018, we should be good. I know five and one were good. Like according to the plastic gauge, those were around one eight to, to two thousandths. It was two, three, and four that I was worried about with the plastic gauge. So I'm gonna go through and check everything out right now. And if it all checks out, we should be able to start assembling this motor. Provided that those ghetto little uh, ring compressors the adjustable ones i have will work properly for me so let's get to measuring it'll probably take about another hour to get this thing measured out but this is the stuff that makes motors last so if you don't do it you slacking all right dudes all of the bearing clearances are in check let me grab my little sheet so all the rods are at two thousands exactly Crank number one, 0.019, 2.019, 3.020, 4.020, 5.018. So five is a tiny, tiny bit tighter, like a tenth of a thousand tighter than what I would like, but it's okay. You can't really get an oversized bearing by, by a tenth of a thousand. You just have to have the crank polished. It's not that big of a deal. That's like a 20th of a hair. So really, really small. Right now we're just going through cleaning up the block. One thing that is kind of bugging me is why the frick did the plastic gauge read tight on two, three, and four? That's always gonna be in the back of my mind, no matter what, but I just gotta move on from it. I know that measuring it with proper instruments is much more accurate than plastic gauge. So many people say don't use plastic gauge, and I've always used it in the past. One other thing I'm worried about is piston to oil squirter clearance, so we will be checking that. But yeah, let's get this block cleaned up, get the crank installed. Assembly lube of choice today is the red line.
crank is assembled in the block, everything's torqued down, crank spins perfectly, we're all good to go there. Next up is assembling the rings onto the pistons. Well, first up, what we're gonna do, one circlip in. So this right here is the circlip, it holds the piston pin in. This is piston one, that is cylinder one, this is the timing chain side. And intake valve reliefs are always bigger, so those are gonna go that way. This little pin right here, this little dot is gonna face toward the front of the motor, so going that way. Number one, put a circlip in. Two, install the rings according to this guide right here. Three, get the rod on the piston. Four, drop the whole thing into the cylinder, trying to use this adjustable ring compressor. So we're starting out with the oil expander ring. That's gonna sit on the bottom side of the piston. And then, and then the oil rails are gonna go on after the expander ring. The numbers on the compression rings, the two top rings are the compression rings. The numbers always go to the top and the iron one, the darker one is the second ring and this chrome one is the top ring. All right guys, this thing is ready to go in the block. So I always use WD-40 for lube. Some people think it's funny, but yeah, I've always used it. You don't want to use motor oil because your rings will take like three years to seat. So just lightly coat the cylinder wall. I'm gonna coat this ghetto ass compressor. If this doesn't work, we're gonna have to go buy an actual one, like a, a set one. Coat that up a little bit and let's see if we can get it done. All right, I'm gonna try one more time. If I can't get it, I'm not using it. I'm not gonna risk breaking a ring about this. All right, I ain't using that. I'm not gonna risk it, guys. I might, you know what, one second. I'm gonna try a smaller size. The next smaller size, see what happens. I really don't wanna go all the way to looking into far drive. There we go, that worked. That went in good. All right, I like that. I think we can make do. So I probably should have checked this a while ago, but I'm gonna check it right now before we get any further. I'm gonna connect this piston to the crank, spin the crank over and make sure it doesn't hit that oil squirter. The bottom of the piston, the skirt sometimes does. Let's see if it does. Holy crap. I wonder why some pistons hit, some pistons don't. Let me see if I can show you guys an angle on this. It hits pretty bad. You see that right there? That's the squirter hitting the piston. So honestly, I've never clearanced, I don't know if I need to clearance the pistons or the oil squirters. Either way, I've never done either one of those. So I'm gonna go online, do some reading. There's always gonna be little roadblocks when building a motor or even building a car for that matter. You just gotta keep going, figure it out, and you'll eventually get around that roadblock. It's not that big a video, guys. Alrighty, so I talked to More Automotive, which is the tuner for all my Evos and probably every car in the future and they highly recommend it to just bend them out of the way. I'm still waiting on MA Performance to get back to me. I think they're gonna say the same thing and I actually contacted Wisco as well. And I think they are gonna say the same thing because pretty much everybody online says to bend them out of the way. Some people say to remove them, but in my mind, it makes sense to bend them out of the way because I don't think Mitsubishi would put them on the motor if they weren't needed. I mean, I'm sure they're not 100% needed, especially with operating of pistons because they're a lot stronger, but I'm gonna go ahead, bend them out of the way. I think I can get them removed off this block without taking the crank off, so that should be nice. Yeah, just like a quarter inch, eighth inch to the side, and we should be good to go. These things bend way too easy. I was gonna show you guys how, to, how I did it, but I literally touched it and it bent, so I just put a, uh, extension through where the bolt goes and then twisted it just a tiny bit and it bent. I'm gonna throw it back on the motor and see if it still hits. All right, boys, it looks like we have probably a solid quarter inch of clearance. Let me see if I can show you guys. There's gonna be plenty. Yeah, see that? Look at all that clearance. I don't know if you can really see on the camera, but there's plenty. What I think I'm actually gonna do is Maybe a little bit backwards, but I'm gonna get all the pistons into the cylinder walls and then after everything's assembled I'm gonna pull the squirters because you can easily get them out bend them get them back in rotate the motor Make sure everything clears properly. I can bend them now, but I'm just not gonna be sure I could bend them now or you can bend them later. I'm gonna bend them later
All right, guys, all of the oil squirters are clearanced and bent exactly how they need to be. Last thing to do is torque those down to 24 foot pounds, torque the rod bolts down to 30 foot pounds. Then we can move on to throwing some sealant on and getting the engine girdle, like the bottom half of the block onto the block itself. The short block is pretty much assembled. We have the seal on and it has to dry about 30 minutes before we can actually torque down the six bolts holding the girdle to the block. In the meantime, I'm gonna pull apart my new OEM oil pump and throw some assembly lube in there, kind of prime it before I put it on the motor itself. After that, all we have to do is torque those six bolts. I believe those go to 24 foot pounds. And then from there, we can't really do anything until we get our cams and head gasket, pretty much our whole gasket kit, our cams and our timing chain. minutes is up they all actually go to 19 foot pounds not 24 so all of those go to 19 and the oil pump as well I believe goes to 19 foot pounds well unfortunately there's nothing else we can do on this Evo 10 motor until we get all the other parts so with that being said I'm gonna bag it up with some nice garbage bags throw it back up on the shelf where it's nice and safe. Don't have to worry about it getting damaged at all. And then we can pull it back out in hopefully like a week or two when we get the rest of the parts for this motor build. Kind of sad that I can't get it done today. I have to say goodbye to my beloved Evo 10 motor, but it's all good. It'll be done soon. Okay, that's really freaking heavy. Yeah, I don't know if I can get it up there. I got this. Watch me drop it. Ugh. That's heavy. That's real heavy. I feel like this is what is so amazing and powerful with like YouTube and social media is you guys kind of saw me struggle the last two days trying to build this motor. A lot of weird little issues I was having with the with the bearing tolerances yesterday and then today with like the oil squirters. And I know a lot of people don't really document that stuff. They'll just kind of do it and then they won't really show it because I feel like if they show it and then their motor fails, like sometimes mine do, then everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's because of this and this and this. But I feel like it's so important to document this kind of stuff to help you guys out, to help the rest of the world out. If you guys ever wanna build the motor, you know what to look out for. You know how to measure the, the bearings. You know that maybe your, your pistons are gonna hit the squirters. All that kind of stuff, so important to document. And I wish more people would show that. With that being said, that is it for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.